Hello, I'm Robert and I'm back again to describe this simple experiment that you can do at home, an experiment in artificial gravity. And this is to test an idea which may help with the problems of weightlessness, the long term, if you spend long time in weightlessness, then serious medical problems. And may make it much easier to have interplanetary space flights and, tra and living in space stations, for instance, in the L2 position on the far side of the moon, you could stay there maybe for years at a time if this works. So the, uh, the background to this is that NASA have these guidelines of a maximum of three rotations per minute for artificial gravity and going down to fractions of a rotation per minute if you're spending months or even years there. And this is the basis behind the designs, for instance, of the O'Neill cylinders or the Sanford Taurus. That's the reason why these are designed as great big kilometer scale uh, structures in space. Big, expensive, hard to build kilometer scale structures in space. And that's so because you have the idea that you would have to have a very slow spin rate in order to have artificial gravity for the general population, for anybody to be able to tolerate it. However, the new idea that uh, people are thinking about is using it rather as a form of medicine. So instead of uh, that you're permanently in these situations, you need to be able to do everything in these circumstances. The idea, especially for in the, in the near future, is the idea you could have a small centrifuge inside a space station. And this was a place where you'd go just for an hour or so a day, or even just for a few minute, minutes of exercising under full gravity or partial gravity. And it's a kind of medicine, just like when you go into space and if you spend a year in space, you might become very ill. When you get back to Earth, you very quickly recover. And within a few hours, you're walking about normally. And uh, within a couple of months, you're back to normal health again. Your bones recover over a longer period, maybe up to two years and longer for the spongy inside of your bones. But the gravity is the medicine for zero gravity. So the idea is what if instead you have just a little bit of this gravity medicine every day, then would that work? And that, would that mean that you could live much longer in, in, in zero gravity before you become ill? And it could be that your maximum lifespan that you can spend in zero gravity, because it's thought that probably eventually you might well die of if you sit in zero gravity and you couldn't come back to Earth. So suppose that was a bit under two years, the maximum lifespan. Maybe you could extend it to 10 years, and that would make a very big difference, both for a permanent occupation of space stations, for instance, on the far side of the moon in the L2 position, or in the L1 position, and you could go and live there maybe for years at a time. Or you could go out to Mars orbit for years at a time, or even go right out to Jupiter and back. Uh, uh, very long-term missions that would last for years. And this could all be opened out if it's possible to spend uh, years at a time in space. So that's what this experiment is about. And then uh, the, the, a couple of things that come into it as well. So three rotations per minute is really far, far too slow still to get a reasonable amount of artificial gravity. That will only give you about a hundredth of G or less, depending on the radius of your centrifuge. But uh, the, there's also this idea that we, we're not going to be doing just your normal activities. You're not going to need fine hand-eye coordination. All you're doing there is you might be either resting, you might be sleeping, you might be eating your meal and then digesting it, or you might be doing weightlifting, or, you know, I mean, I don't mean weightlifting, uh, some kind of exercise, or whatever it is, it could be weightlifting if you like, or uh, you'll be doing some kind of exercise in, the, in these conditions as well. And in all these situations, you don't need very fine co coordination, and you also, you can keep your head relatively still. You, you, uh, you, if you're doing exercise, make sure it's an exercise that has your head always pointing in one direction. And, and if you have your head reasonably fixed relative to the spin, then this greatly reduces the possibilities of nausea. And then also, if your only thing you're concerned about is nausea, then you can tolerate a much faster spin rate than if you're interested in the more subtle effects. So this then opens up the possibility of having a very short centrifuge, so something like one meter radius, that is large enough to get a full G at 30 rotations per minute. 
So we're going to test to see if you can uh, tolerate 30 rotations per minute and expect a very wide range in susceptibility. Some people will be very sensitive uh, to spinning and they can detect even a tiny amount of spin and they'll start becoming nauseous. And other people much more tolerant of it. But it's also something that you can adapt to. And this is something that also was somewhat ignored in these early studies, not much attention paid to it. And it turns out that you can adapt very, very quickly, surprisingly quickly. Uh, MIT study, and they had uh, students at MIT in just five sessions of one hour a day at 23 rotations per minute. And by the fifth session, they uh, found it much, much easier to tolerate. And, and all the discomfort, most of that was gone after just five sessions, five training sessions. And it's sure that this must continue long term. You get, for instance, ice skaters, they can tolerate extremely fast spin rates of multiple spins per second. And they can tolerate that, well, it's just for minutes, for length of their routine, but it shows very fast spin rates that will make anybody else feel nauseous. And they don't even feel very dizzy just as they come out of the spin. While they're spinning, they don't feel dizzy. But as they come out of it, they may feel momentarily dizzy. And so uh, that then, let's just go straight to the experiment. I can talk a bit more about this as we go on. So we're going to start off with a very, uh, a very slow spin rate. We'll start at a quarter of lunar gravity, because I think probably almost anyone will be able to tolerate that for some period of time anyway. So you get a quarter of lunar gravity at six rotations per minute you get a sixteenth of lunar gravity at the three rotations per minute. And that's because it goes up as the square. It's a, it's a velocity squared divided by radius if you're a physicist or a mathematician. So we're going to start at six rotations per minute. Then the way to do that, you can do it with the metronome. So I'm going to put up a metronome uh, on, on my YouTube channel, on my Bounce Metronome YouTube channel, uh, uh, both the video and the sound which you can use to, um, to do the, all these different levels of gravity. I'll have a, a long video, half an hour video for each one. So you can use that if you haven't got a metronome. But you can also uh, just count. So you get quite a good approximation for 60 beats per minute, one per second, by counting 1,000, 2,000, 1,000, 2,000, quite slowly, like that. So for the six rotations per minute, We've got 10 of those to go all the way around. You can, if you like, before you start, you can sort of spot different directions. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And so if we count around like that, and just to order a little bit more preparation, I always start on a, I find it's much easier to do on a hard surface, on a nice firm floor. Uh, the main thing is that, especially as you get to the faster spin rates, then you need to, it really helps with your balance if you've got a nice good connection with the floor. And certainly you don't want a loose carpet that can get scrumpled up and trip over. And then you, uh, I actually find it best in my stocking feet, uh, uh, certainly you wouldn't want to do this in slippers. Uh, so, uh, and then the other thing is that you might well fall over. Uh, especially as you get to the faster spin rates or if you're very susceptible. So uh, when you first start it, so you know, if you think you might you know, go around and suddenly you sort of fall over like that, then bear that in mind that that might happen. And make sure you've got things to either side in all directions that you can hold on to or some soft surface that you can land on. Uh, hopefully you won't uh, fall over at this slow spin rate. And the other thing that really helps is that you uh, is to lead it into, into it gradually. So if you're very susceptible, then just start very, very gradually like that. And then you gradually build up to the quarter of lunar gravity. So you can go bound like that now and probably get the on for the quarter of lunar gravity already. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, 1,000, 2,000. 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. Then my hands, if they're a metre out, they would experience a quarter of lunar gravity being pulled out. 
And so this might be your, uh, one of the lower settings on the hammock in, in the space station, which I imagine most people would be able to tolerate for at least a fair bit of time. So that's a quarter of lunar gravity. And so now I'll go up to uh, full lunar gravity. Uh, and we'll be pulling out of my hands. Of course, we've got gravity downwards as well, so you won't feel very much left yet at this point. So in this one, we've got to find five different positions. So you go uh, one, two, three, four, five, like that. One, two, three, four, five. And it's the same thing, go around counting 1,000, 2,000, etc. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. 1,000, 2,000. 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. So that's uh, lunar gravity. So my hands were feeling lunar gravity outwards. Now, when we get to Mars, Mars gravity is it's roughly three rotations. Actually, three rotations, uh, uh, it's 18 rotations per minute. It's, uh, then you count roughly three times around. It's actually, you would set it actually to 56 if you had a metronome, and then you would do every third click, if you want to be exact. The, uh, so the video that I put up, I'll make sure that it's, uh, it's set to the right speed. But uh, we're just doing it approximately now. So now you've got to find three positions, so one, two, three. And then when you go in a little bit faster like this, then you, uh, you need, might find you need to walk a little bit more and a different uh, uh, walking pace. So instead of going 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 like that, you go 1,000, go 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. So quite a, a fast, stepping back and forth quite quickly, that makes it much easier to turn around at this speed. So you go 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. But uh, go into it slowly, remember, if you're susceptible. So go just quietly slowly like that, and then speed up until you reach the rate that you want. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. At this speed, then you might well find that the surroundings are beginning to get a good bit blurry. They're pretty short too. And at night you might see the lights beginning to streak a little bit. But that doesn't mean you're dizzy. That's just quite, that's just an eye a thing in your eyes. It, 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 the eyes just can't keep up with the speed. And, uh, and if this was discomforting, in uh, uh, one of the things that might actually make a difference is if you actually were enclosed in some room that went around at the same speed as you do. So if some people are very susceptible to this visual mo mo motion, then it's possible that you mightn't be so susceptible if you were at some kind of covering that went around at the same speed as you. But closing your eyes, well, you tend to get dizzy very easily with, with the eyes closed. So it might well be best to have them open. So then you gradually slow down when you're finished. And, and then there you are. I'm holding my arms out because it helps a little bit with balance. And so that's the Mars gravity. So finally, I'm going to go all the way up to full Earth gravity. Now, when you get to full Earth gravity, you actually will feel your arms moving and being pulled out sideways. So, uh, if you had your hands like that, then the actual the force out, the full gravity outwards, but of course you've got Earth gravity downwards as well. And if, if your hands were actually a metre away, then they'd be equalised at a 45 degree angle. But because um, your hands will bounce a little bit closer in, so it might be more like 60 degrees. But you'll find, you'll find, it, you'll definitely feel gravity outwards. If you hold your hands like that, you'll feel them naturally move outwards under the force of the artificial gravity. So that's quite cool that you actually feel the artificial gravity as you turn around when you get to full gravity. So let's start doing that now. Speed up slowly. And we've, this time we've just got two points. So 1,000, 2,000, 1,000, 2,000. And again, doing uh, 
thousand, two thousand, like that, alternating with your feet. So one, but the start off going really quite uh, slowly and then speed up gradually. But then eventually, uh, it will feel much faster than it looks in the video. One thousand, two thousand, one thousand, two thousand, one thousand, two thousand, one thousand, two thousand, and you will find that your arms can actually move out. If you put them by side, they'll still float out when you let go. So you have to think blowing now, gradually slow down, whilst your mic not fall over. Gradually slow down until you stop. So that's, that's the full earth gravity. And uh, uh, so that's the spin rate that if you were in a space station and, and you were at the end of a centrifuge arm of that length, if you were one metre away from the pivot, uh, then you, you would experience full gravity. And I think that's about it. I just want to describe the experiment because if you want to find out more, there's the other YouTube videos. I'll put links to the other YouTube videos where I talk about this in detail. And then there's also going to be, I'm going to write an article for Science 20 and in my column on Science 20. And, and, and this will be an embedded video in that. And, uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'm also going to upload, I'll upload the, all these four different amounts of artificial, artificial gravity, so you can give it a go. So a quarter lunar gravity, lunar gravity, uh, Mars and Earth, that's uh, 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 every 10 and every 5 clicks, every 3 clicks and every 2 clicks. And that gets you all the way up to um, full Earth gravity. <laughs>